Welcome to part two of the circle jump game development video series. In this part, we're going to construct the basic gameplay where our player can jump from circle to circle in a continuous line. And we'll also add a few uh, beginning visual effects to spice up the appearance a little bit. All right, let's get started. So let's start by adding a couple more nodes to our main scene. I'm gonna add a position 2D this is going to be my start position. And let's see, we're going to start down here somewhere towards the bottom of the screen. And I'm going to add a camera. And this camera is going to basically follow, right? It's going to lock onto the circle when the player's on it. And when you jump to another circle, it'll jump to that one, right? So it doesn't really matter where we put it right now. And then I'm going to delete these instances because that was just to test the capturing. We're going to instance this stuff in code. So let's see. Oh, and then on the camera, right? Like for example, if it's down here, I don't care about the space below the camera. I want to see more above it. So I'm going to set the Y offset to about minus 200. That way now when the camera is fixed on something, we can see more of the screen above us. We'll always be towards the bottom of the screen when we're on the camera. And uh, let's see, let's make a current on. And that should do that. Okay, so let's add some things here. On my jumper, I'm going to add a captured signal that we can emit when we are captured. So on area entered here, we're going to emit the signal here. And we're going to include, we're going to pass along the area that we hit. And then on the circle, I want to change this to, also when I initialize the circle, I want to pass a position as well so that we will set that when the circle is initiated so that every time we create an instance we can pass it something and we don't even need this ready anymore now we can add a script to our main scene here and first thing we're going to need is we're going to need a reference to our scenes our saved scenes so we can instance them so we're going to grab the circle scene and the jumper will preload the jumper. We'll have a variable to store our player in. And then in the ready, we're going to say randomize and new game. Now this is temporary because we're going to eventually have a UI where we click a button to start a new game. but. We'll define that now and we'll just call it by default. So when we start a new game, we need to center the camera. So we're going to put the camera 2D's position to the start position. And we need to spawn our player. So player, we make a jum jumper instance. Uh, we set the player's position equal to the start position. Uh, we've got to add child. And then we need to connect. We're going to connect that captured signal to a function here that we'll call on jumper captured. I like to keep just follow the same naming scheme that the engine uses. And then we're going to spawn a circle, which is something that we will have to define, but we want to start it at the start position. So what does spawn circle do? Well, it takes a position or not. Right? If we pass it a position, it's going to use that position. But if we don't, then we will be randomly picking a position. But we want to make a circle instance. And then if we don't have a position, right, if we weren't past a position for where to spawn, then we're going to pick a random one. 
and I'm just going to use some guesstimate numbers right now based on the previous circle we're on. So maybe 150 pixels to the right or left, and the Y is going to be somewhere between 400 and 500 pixels above where the current one is. And so we'll set the position to the current circle, which is player.target position plus that X and Y that we just calculated. So now we have a, we've picked a random position. So we'll add the, chi add the circle as a child, and then we will call in it with position on the child and pass it that position so it knows what to do. And then we need our function for capturing that signal. So on jumper captured, uh, we're passing it something. Right now it's an area, but it may, might be something else later. We're going to take the camera 2D and we're going to set its position equal to that new object that we just did. So the camera will jump and then we need to spawn another circle. But now if I call spawn circle here like this, right, because I want a random circle, I'm going to get an error message from the engine because this on captured is getting signaled, right? The signal is getting emitted when we're in the middle of area entered processing. So we're in the middle of physics processing when that happens. And Godot doesn't like you to change the physics state during physics processing like this, because adding another area could could change around things, could change things that are currently being processed. So spawn circle is going to give us an error telling us that we can't do this during this stage. But we can solve that by just deferring the call. And this says do this at the end, call this function at the end of physics processing. All right, let's try this out. We run main. There we are. We're on a circle. There's another circle. And when I jump to it, the camera just teleports, right? And that's really jarring. I'm That's discontinuous. I get kind of lost. I don't know where I am. We can fix that by turning on smoothing. And the speed, I think a good speed is probably somewhere between 5 and 10. Uh, let's... Let's go ahead and make main our main scene. And now you see the, the camera interpolates its position to the new one, so we don't lose track of where we are. That's pretty good. So now we have an infinite series of circles, one after another, that we can keep going until we go off the screen. So something else you may have noticed, I bring it up here, is the circle's pivot point is is always rotating. So we don't know where it is. So when we hit the circle, see we jumped over to there because we placed the jumper where the pivot point is. And that might be on the opposite side of the circle from where we hit, which looks really jarring as well. So we want to go into the jumper code in here and on jumper area entered, we're going to say target dot get node pivot. Right, we want to get that pivot node and change its rotation to the vector between them angle. And that will snap it to where it is or where we are when we hit. Let's see what that looks like now. Give another quick test and see now I started there. I start rotating from the spot I hit. And that looks a lot less jarring. Okay, and then we also are always rotating clockwise, and I'd like it to randomly choose between clockwise and counterclockwise, so at least there's some variety there. And we can do that by on the init on the circle, right? We can, ch we can pick our rotation speed. Our rotation speed right now is set to pi. We might change that later. But rotation speed, whatever it is, I want to multiply it by randomly 1 or negative 1. Easiest way to get 
a 1 or a negative 1 is to raise negative 1 to the 0 or 1 power. Right? Negative 1 to the 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 to the 0 is positive 1. So now we can know that it's going to randomly choose a direction whenever we hit. Okay, the next thing I wanted to add is some some things to the circle to make them a little more interesting. We're going to add some animations. So I'm going to add an animation player. And this first animation we're going to call implode. This is going to be the animation that plays when we jump off the circle. I want it to shrink into nothing and disappear since we've left it because you can't jump back to it. Right? We don't want that. So the implode animation, we're going to take the circle and we're going to use its scale. So I'll keyframe that. Uh, let's see, how long do I want this to last? Not very long. Let's try 0.4. We'll see how that goes. Zip this over to there. And then I want the scale to be 0, 0. And we'll keyframe that. So that's the animation, right? It just shrinks down. And maybe we'll animate the visibility as well. So I'm going to take the modulate right? and we'll key that. And then we'll fade it down to, so then we'll take the modulate alpha down to zero. And we'll keyframe that. And then yeah, it just sort of fades out a little bit. That's good. Over on the circle, I'm going to make an implode function, which we're going to call when we implode. And I'm just going to say animation player dot play implode. Then we're going to yield for the animation player animation finished so that we let it finish. And then we're going to queue free. And then that way, when we jump from our jumper, we can tell our target to implode. All right, jumping off you, you should go away. Let's play this. Now when I jump off, the circle shrinks away. Now for the other animation, which is going to play when we get captured on a circle, I'm going to duplicate this sprite. And I'm just going to call this the sprite effect. And I'm going to set it to invisible. And then on the animation player, we're going to make an animation called capture. And let's see, the capture animation, we're going to make that about half a second long. I sometimes like to change this to snap to 0 0.01 so I have a little more resolution for moving the keyframes around. This one, I think, I'm just going to start off with it rudimentary. We're probably going to change it around a lot as we go. Um, I don't expect to get it perfect the first time around. But we are going to set its visibility to on. So we want to keyframe that. We're going to set its scale at the beginning of this to a larger value. So let's set that to like 3, 3. And at the very end, I want it to scale all the way down to 0, 0. All right, so just sort of the idea is it's going to shrink in like that. But we also want some visibility changes as well. So I'm going to go to the modulate. And I think we're going to start it out at an alpha of 0. So we'll keyframe that. And then as it comes in, Well, let's go all the way to the end. At the end, I want it to be maybe, well, let's see what it looks like if we have it on full here. Let's 
Yeah, I think maybe what we'll do is fade it down towards somewhere more in the half range. Yeah, something like that. That's a that's a first pass. I'm not trying to get it looking perfect yet, but I just want some effect that I can play when it's captured. So now on the circle script, we're also going to add a capture function that's going to call that animation player and play the capture animation. And we will call that on our uh, main when it hears the signal. So on our main script, when the jumper is captured, we're going to call object.capture, which only plays the animation right now, but again, just leaving room for us to add more things later on. So now when we hit the circle, we get that little zooming in ring. And that's okay for right now. That's good enough for us to... It's a good enough starting point for us. One last thing I want to add this time around is on the jumper. I want to give it a trail that sort of streams out behind it. Um, let's add a... We're going to add a node. And then we're going to add a line 2D. The reason I'm using the node here is for the trail is I don't want the line 2D to use local coordinates. I want to use global coordinates. So we're just going to pump our coordinates into that line 2D so it will leave a line behind us. I'm going to call these the points of the line. So trail, points. And let's make our, well, let's make our jumper, I'm going to make it a red color and then make an orange trail. doesn't really matter at this point, but I want something that will look good. So on the trail points, what we want to do is we want to fill this with a gradient. And we want the starting point of the gradient to be um, whatever color we're going to do with an alpha of 0. And then we want the end one to be whatever color we're going to do with an alpha that's full. And then we get a nice trail. I like to leave the end and beginning caps round. And that should do it. So in the script, what we want to do is I'm going to add a reference to the node 2D, so I have to call that all the time. And I'm going to add a var trail length. How long I want the trail to be, how many points it will have. And then in the physics process, what we can do is just check if the size of the list of points is greater than trail length, then we're going to remove one. We're going to say remove point zero. Remove the first point that was in there. And then we'll always add point where we are right now. So now our trail, uh, the only problem is our trail is coming out from, see it's being drawn on top of the jumper. So we also need to take this and set its Z index lower so that it'll be coming out from the jumper, not above it. So that'll do it for this time. I think we've made some more progress. We're getting closer to having an actual game. Keep leaving your questions and suggestions in the comments below, and I'll see you for the next part where we will start working on the UI. And I'm also interested in making uh, color schemes where we can we can control what color everything is and make um, appealing color schemes that the user can choose from when they're playing the game. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.